All right, so back to the parallax equations. To appreciate how they are derived, we need to appreciate diagrams like what we are looking at on the board. Okay, so uh, we need to look at the geometry very well. Okay, if I, if I look at this one, a point like point P on the ground, okay, it's actually captured at P up here. And then, let me mute everyone. Okay, we can have a point, of course, W will appear on the, it's not really an object, are you okay? W is not an object, but it represents a point where we've actually intercepted, are you okay? This line, the intersection between the two, the orthogonal points, are you okay? Two orthogonal points. So W and then W prime, okay? P appears twice, it appears here and appears there, is all right? And then we have the exposure station L and then L1. The separation between the exposure stations is known as the photo air base, or you can just call it air base. Are you okay? That's this distance. It's very important for us to know that. Okay, now there are a whole lot of triangles that are developing as we join these lines. Okay, so these triangles then are used to then derive a formula and the formula that we talk about in parallax is what we call the parallax equations. Is that okay? All right. So um, let me just end that one there. All right. So you can see that yes, triangles. You know, we're looking at two triangles that are similar, and then in fact, in fact, it's just similar triangles throughout, and then eventually we can just derive a formula. So straight away, I'm just going to go to the so-called, not the so-called, I like saying so-called, and the parallax equations is okay. So the first equation is a relationship between the height of an object, the flying height, the photo air base, the focal length, and then the parallax. So you can literally put subscripts here and say that if I want the height of an object, are you okay? And I know the parallax of the point on the image, okay? I can simply use the flying height, the photo air base, the focal length, and then calculate. So I can calculate just the flight, the, the, the elevation of a point simply by having, you know, these parameters on the right hand side. So this is. This is the first equation, first parallax equation, this one. Okay, so the second one is, you know, basically very simple formula that relates the ground coordinates, not really the ground coordinates, but, you know, we can consider it as such. X, bigger X means ground, okay, with the photo coordinates, the parallax at the points. So if you have the the, the photo coordinates, the parallax at the point, we can drive like the ground coordinates. So that's that's one of the things that we can do. So here too, we can just say for a point A, and then for with a parallax A, okay, so the point on the ground is A. So you can take note of the fact that I'm using capital A as a subscript, are you okay? For the capital A, so in photogrammetry, when you see capital B, it's on the ground. When you see smaller, smaller, you know, smaller case, lower case, lower case means you are dealing with the photo, photo or the image space. Okay, so there we go. And then we can write the same thing for the Y as well. So Y A, so the Y coordinates, the parallax at point A, Okay, if the, we, we look at the y coordinates here yeah, of the point A, ground coordinates for point A, then obviously we can write this relationship, hierarchy. So by extension, this is what these formulas actually mean. Okay, let's move on.
Palace equation is a few things to notice that they are truly vertical. They only apply to truly vertical photographs only. We we will talk about vertical photographs, but vertical we I think we know what vertical photographs are. They are not tilted. Are you okay? Um, they are not oblique or panoramic or any of the funny types of photographs. In fact, they are not selfies. <laughs> are you okay? Selfies are really like off, 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 off. Anyway, there are photos taken from. They are valid for photos taken from same flying height. So on equal flying height won't work. In fact, take note of that. It doesn't on equal flying height doesn't help anybody. Just put that in your head. Okay, for, they are valid for coordinates related to the flight line access system. I think, yeah, and which is actually the photo coordinate system. I think uh, because I'm teaching photogrammetry too, sometimes I assume ground coordinates are not related to the true ground coordinates, but to the coordinate system of the stereo pair. Okay, so let's take note of that. So they are not necessarily like the actual ground coordinates as in the um, uh, Ghana UTM and all these kind of things. Are you okay? War office projected coordinate system. Take note of that. That's the capital X that we talked about back here. Okay, we are talking about this. Okay, all right, so let's move on. Now, there are a few equations that I think we will just look at their interpretation, and I, that means that you need to remember if the few equations you need to remember, one of them is what we have up here. The Pallas equations, okay, take note of that. The Pallas bar and then how you compute the Pallas for a point. You need to know that, okay. Simple subtraction and we are done. Okay, elevation by Pallas differences. Okay, so we can also have a relationship for that as well. Okay, so this is, the equation. So delta P is actually the parallax differences between two points. Is that okay? So the parallax for one point, say point A, will be XA minus XA prime. Are you okay? For point B, XB minus XB prime. Are you okay? But then once we can find the parallax differences between two points, point A and point B, or point A and point C, as we are doing right now, then we can write an equation that relates to the height of a point on the ground. If you know the flying height, okay, if you know the flying height, which is capital H, all right, and we know the parallax for point A, they will be getting the height at point, at point A. Are you okay? So what is interesting about this is that delta P is equal to PA minus PC. Are you okay? Uh, I'm thinking you can generate a whole lot of height of objects by simply measuring parallax differences, are you okay? So parallax different from here to here as I go, um, I'll be just generating the height at those points. Okay, all right, so that is worth noting. Okay, so please guys, you need to know the formula and how it works and use it. If we do a traditional exam, you need to know it, have it in your head. If we do an online exam, you need to know what it means are you okay it's very important because then if you're unable to explain we're going to be in serious trouble okay so i think yeah we've already talked about this one this is the parallax for the principal points okay parallax for the principal points okay all right and i think we can even write more relationships so we, we can just look at it there are more that we can talk about. A few more. Let me just say, let me just say more. Let me just say more. There's a few more. All right. Sources of errors in measuring parallax. First one is locating and marking flight lines. I think we all agree. Orienting steel pairs for parallax measurements. Okay. I think we talked about that. Parallax and photo coordinate measurements. I think if you make an error in your 
measurement of your parallax and the photochronics, you'll be having issues. Shrinkage is always going to be an issue. Expansion of photos. On equal flying height, we just talked about that. Total photographs, um, you don't want it. Ayaki, you don't want tilted photographs. Errors in ground control. Yeah, that is if you're actually doing the HA equal to HC plus delta P and all that. Okay, the formula we just looked at. Errors in ground control, I talked about that. Other, error, other errors are camera lens distortion, atmospheric refraction. All, this, all these things, we don't want them in photogrammetry in general, anywhere it goes. But so put it in your head and then you can always talk about it. Total photographs are a problem. Are you okay? All right. So um, the rest is really um, error evaluation, which I don't think we will spend time on that. It can be looked at under survey adjustments, you know, of propagation, okay. All right, I said on a different topic, so I'm not, I'm not touching on that. Okay, so if you have any question, you can bring it up. If you don't, then I'll move on and I'll talk about something else. Okay, so if you have a question on parallax, ask because I'm actually changing topics right now. Do you have any question on parallax? While we do it, you need to ask a lot of questions. If we do an online exam, which we don't know, Corona, COVID, 2021 is around the corner. And of course, Latest by first week in January, we are done with these lectures. Okay, so I want you to take it seriously. I'm going to drop some files in your WhatsApp or maybe on your e-learning platform. You have an assignment to do some computation. So please, this assignment, you need to get it done. Okay. So guys, take note of the assignment I have for you. Compute at least five. I'll put it up for you three uh, photogrammetric parameter values to um, metric values based on photo coordinates. Coordinates, okay. Example will be computing capital X day, which we just talked about, okay. Or computing parallax and all these things. So co compute at least three values, three photogrammetric values based on photo coordinates. Okay, this is a simple question that you are supposed to do based on the photographs that I'll give you. I'll give you photographs and I'll probably give you. Um, a calibration certificate to tell you, you know, what the photographs are, you know, like the, the flying height, how, when it was taken, which company took it. Is okay. So this is an assignment for you. Do your assignments. I don't want, I want us to be friends. You see, when you, when you are being taught, don't be, don't resist. <laughs> I don't want to give, I don't want to sound um, philosoph philosophical here, but please be a student whilst you're a student and do what your lecturer asks you to do. It's okay, do this assignment. I always remember I've given you this assignment. I'll, I'll supply you with photographs that you use. Is that okay? All right, great. So no questions coming. I'll move on and I'll start the next topic. And then um, based on how it goes, we will continue another time or we will simply um finish it up is okay so that the next topic is really going to be fun because we already talked about stereoscopic parallax and um, vertical photographs is easy i think so i think so we should be able to probably finish it right now i think we've already talked about the fact that vertical photographs are photographs which don't have a, an angle of tilt are you okay which which is actually less than three degrees or one degree, it's, it's, you're not supposed to be have anything at all in the UK because total photographs really have a tilt between zero and then three degrees, are you okay? So the axis, okay, 
of the camera at the time of photography is coincident with the vertical. That's a vertical photograph. Are you okay? It's coincident with it. So it doesn't, it doesn't go off. Are you okay? So that is the vertical photograph. So there you go. Vertical photograph, photo taking with the optical axis coinciding the direction of gravity. Okay, that is the vertical photograph. Okay, so let's go over it. The next one is a tilted photograph. It's a photo taken with the optical axis unintentionally tilted from the vertical by a small amount, usually less than three degrees. So it's, so it's between zero and then three degrees. It's near vertical. We need to know the exposure station. I've been talking about it, but I think we talk about it again. It's the space position of the front nodal point. Remember, we have the rear nodal point and the front nodal point in the diagram of the camera. Line height, elevation of the exposure station above sea level or day two. So I think I've been drawing these things so you know what it is. So if this is your datum, then your flying height is from here to here. Okay, I mean, I'll draw it better. I can draw it better than this. Are you okay? All right. So let me talk about it again because I cannot, I don't want to make an assumption that you know, you know, something that you have probably not talking about. Even though I know you've all been to survey school, Yes, normally you are asked questions, you know, and every examination is an examination. It's going to be a challenge. Are you okay? Um, so the flying height, if this is your day two, which can be the mean sea level, or an assumed day two, then the flying height is from here to here. Okay, so the vertical is the line through which an apple will fall. Are you okay? If you drop an apple, the line which you define, that's the vertical, the line of gravity is okay. So the airplane is actually flying in this direction. Okay, I hope you like my the, my drawing of the airplane. All right, so the exposure station is the this position here. It's actually X not, Y not, Z not. Okay, that's why you did a lot of math. Are you okay? So that you can appreciate all these things that we talk about. Okay, all right. So now the tilt, let me show you the tilt angle. Let me refresh you. I think you know it already, but we will still have to touch on it. If you know it already, you need to score 95. Is that okay? So the angle here, that is the tilt. So if this is T, that's a tilt. Are you okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so that is it, my own explanation on what we have here. All right, great. So I think we already explained to you, but let's go over it again. Exercise of the photograph is the line on the photo between the opposite fiducials, which most nearly parallels the direction of light. Now, what is the fiducials? So let's go back to the board and look at the fiducials, the ground fiducials. All right, so now take a photograph. You can always have, you know, what we call the fiducials, side fiducials, which are actually here. They are marks that begin the whole coordinate system for a photograph. It's okay. More or less, if you draw a line through the fiducials, they will be coinciding or meeting at the principal point, which is somewhere here. Okay, so the principal point, not somewhere here. So that point is the center of the photograph. Is okay. So the fiducials are these ones, one, two, three. So there are four of them. These are side fiducials. You can have what we call, have what we call corner fiducials. Are you okay? Which are gonna be somewhere here. Okay, so they can also be used by drawing diagonals. You can establish the center of the photograph. Are you okay? All right, so we're saying that, what are we saying? <laughs> Let's go back to the diagram. That the X axis is a line on the photo between the opposite fiducials, are you okay? 
which parallels the direction of the flight. So if you really, it's English language, if we really appreciate what I'm talking about, then we are looking at a line moving in this direction. Okay, meanwhile, the side fiducial, opposite fiducials are actually in the direction of flight. Are you okay? All right. So there we go. The same way the y axis is the line of norm on photo normal to the x axis. So that makes it easy. So to define the y axis, simplify the x axis and then draw a line which is perpendicular to it. Are you okay? Line of photo normal to x axis with positive being 90 degree. I mean, seriously, this is so easy. Are you okay to understand and appreciate? Now, I think I just talked about the fiducials, the corner fiducials. So you, so you can use the corner fiducials. Are you okay? And then um, reduce it, reduce the corner fiducials to your photo coordinate system. So for a point A, okay, there are two coordinate systems we'll be looking at here. We are looking at the fiducial coordinate system and then the photo coordinate system. Are you okay? All right. So the center of the photograph is actually X O, Y O, okay, from the fiducial system, coordinate system, fiducial coordinate system. So let me draw the axis for the fiducial coordinate system. It looks more like this. Are you okay? All right. Okay, so we can always reference. So there's a two, there are two coordinates for the same point A. We can have X A, which is this one. And we can have Y A, Y A prime, which are all reference to the fiducial coordinate system. Meanwhile, the photo coordinate system, the axis is actually here. Are you okay? They intersect like this. So, photo coordinate system, the axis are like this. Fiducial coordinate system, the axis are like this. Okay. And the origin for the photo coordinate system is here. The origin for the photo coordinate is at the bottom right. Are you okay? Down here. Okay. So, we can just play around and, you know, reduce. In this case, the fiducial coordinate system, let me get this, the fiducial coordinate of the point by the origin and then get the photo coordinate system, the photo coordinates, are you okay, the photo coordinate. So this is photo coordinate, um, coordinate transformation. This is the beginning of photo coordinate transformation. All right. Okay, all right. So let's, let, as we go, you appreciate it. Okay, we can also relate this, relate to this one down here. X to Y will come expressed like that. I mean, these are just interesting ways of looking at it. Okay, now we start with, in terms of vertical photography, we start with, in terms of calculation, if you want to do any calculation in vertical photography, one of the basic things that you need to do is to determine the scale of the photograph, the scale of the photograph. And the, the formula is very simple. F over H. So focal length over flying height. Are you okay? Where we have the photograph here and then we have um, the ground here. Are you okay? So the ground, everything on the ground is being captured into the photograph. And then the lens is in the, has a focal length of F. Are you okay? Point A is captured in the photograph as small, small, lowercase a. And then point B as lowercase b on the photograph, are you okay? All right, now you can see the optical axis, but in the vertical photography, the vertical is actually hidden there. Are you okay? So this is not only an, an optical axis, it is also the vertical. Also known as the line of gravity line which is defined by where the apple will fall. Are you okay? When you drop an apple. So wherever you are, take something and drop it. That line is vertical. If, the, if you can't understand this, it's going to be seriously an indictment. 
on your qualification entry requirements. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's look at that. So S, which is also the distance AB, okay, over AB. So AB is on the photo. So it's like the normal formula for calculating scale, which is actually distance on the photo or the map over distance on the ground. Are you okay? We are looking at that same formula here. Are you okay? So there you go. Simple example. I don't know what I should call it simple example, but if you have focal length 152.5 millimeter. Let's explain this a bit. Okay. So you have focal length 152.5. Four millimeters and a flying height of go back to it 1830 meters. So, what is the scale of this photograph? Is that okay? The scale. Is equal to AB over AB. You don't have to actually write AB over AB, but I just want to remind you that we are actually, we just talked about this formula, so I just want to bring your mind to it. Focal length is 152.4 millimeters divided by, this is where people have a problem. They can divide it, but they can't, they can't get the answer. Okay, so how do you do this? You have to convert the top to meters. Is that okay? So millimeters to meters, thousand. Are you okay? So we're gonna get one, two, three. So zero point one two four meters. Divided by 1830 meters. So now meters to so cancel meters. And then here we go, equal to, and you can take 0 0.1524 divided by 0 0.152. So we are actually trying to get um, RF scale. Are you okay? Four. 1830 divided by 0 0.1524. Okay, so of course this becomes one. So we want, we want one on top. So what we can do is that we can just work out, use our calculator, all right? So 130 over point. What is that going to be? Okay. We have 10 minutes, but I think it's good. I think next time we can try and get better. 18 what's right? 1830 divided by it's one five two four fourteen. So we're getting twelve thousand. Are you okay? Getting twelve thousand. Right. So now you have to now round this up. You can just round this up. You don't have to write it. You always approximate. Are you okay? You don't have to write anything. So the scale is one in twelve thousand. So you be you need to every one of you need to know how to do this. This basic, honestly, this is so easy when you look at you know, the kind of expectations that we have here. 
Are you okay? Now, when we take a photograph, what we what we just did was for a photograph which is relatively flat. I photograph over an area which is relatively flat. Then it becomes like a mathematical, very simple something. You go to the north, some areas are just so flat. Nothing seems to be. Even Accra has this kind of, you know, areas. But in reality, you have variable terrain. So that the terrain will undulate. Are you okay? There will be changes on the ground, like Kumasi, like this. You know, everywhere is sloping. Everywhere in Kumasi is sloping somewhere. I don't even know where it's flat. Okay, so in that case, then we can derive a formula for the variable terrain. So we assume that there will be a point at point A, a point at point B with different scales. In fact, that is the interesting thing about photogrammetry that you pick a photograph. If the ground is not really flat, then it means the scale is varying on it in a way. Like you can't just say this is the scale are you okay, of this point. It depends on where the elevation of the point. All right, so looking at this carefully, we can see that we have to take note of a few things here. All right, so the datum, take note of the datum, is a reference line with which, from which we are measuring our height, HB, okay? HA will also be measured to this point. Um, then we have a, the difference between the two or the average, no, really, you can look at the average height, okay, of the points. So all the points within the area have HAV, is that okay? All right, so there we go. And nothing you can't see me anymore. Um, so we have the average height of the point, okay? If from here to here, let me get it. Uh, if from here to here is a flying height, okay, then obviously from here to here will be fly height minus what is left of it, which is the HA. Same way we can have the fly height minus that, that will give us that. Then we can now use triangles and, you know, flat triangles as we always do. Okay. So let's move on. We can write a formula, very simple formula, similar triangles. We can prove that the scale I have the average skill SAVG equal to F over H A man H minus H A V G. Are you okay? We, we, we can derive this simple. So if you want to find the maximum skill, we put max here, then we put the maximum height. Are you okay? Yeah. That's what we do. If you want to find the skill at point A, um, I think let me just do it. Let me go back to the board and then. Um, Make it clearer over there. So the scale over a variable terrain, the scale equal to F over H minus H AVG for average height. We can also say scale for the, the maximum scale is given by flying height minus maximum height max. Okay, X min, minimum scale is equal to F over fly height minus minimum height. So that the lowest point in the, you know, the whole, the data set that we have. Okay, et cetera. So that's what we are looking at here. Obviously, if you want the average height, you have to sum all the heights that you have and then divide it by the total number of heights you are using for that computation. We need to know how to measure average or the mean of a set of data sets. A data set, right? Tautology. <laughs> okay, so now you can see that the example follows and then very simply putting into the formula where it says maximum, you put in maximum the maximum height. So you need to read the question and understand it 
topic, when you look at the question, the, the highest average, lowest terrain points, uh, so and so above mean sea level, that is the day two, calculate the maximum scale minimum. This is very easy to do. I think it can, we can easily do this. Are you okay? All right. So that is, that's, I think for vertical photography, we can just keep on working out the example. Um, if, if you really were following, you should be writing this down, trying it yourself to see how it goes, okay? Because I think it's, it's very easy to do. This is 10, 460, 310 meters, are you okay? These are like highest, average, and lowest, okay? Uh, the flying height has been given us 3,000 meters above mean sea level. Yeah, okay, which is H, okay. And then you have the focal length of 152.4 millimeters. So the millimeters is where you, you have the issue, the units, changing it from millimeters to meter. I think that is where the challenge will be, Are you okay. But once you can cross that line, I think you'll be just, you'll be good to go. Are you okay, so over here you can see that we are actually at this stage, let me just hit this to you. When you look at this ratio, you can't just leave it as, as it is here. You will have to convert either meters to millimeters or millimeters to meters. That is what I'm talking about. Before you can actually accept this or get this answer. Otherwise, you never get this answer. You'll be getting something else. So please take note of it. I want you to or calculate this in your spare time and make sure you are getting this value to confirm that what I'm talking about, that what is in the notes is correct. I think next week we'll continue from where we left off and then um, see how far we go. Are you okay? There are a few things to still talk about in vertical photography that we will talk about. And then we move on to tilted photographs. And then, um, yeah, let's see how Let's let's make some progress. Next week we are entering to December, so you can imagine we have like two meetings more in December. So we are not really, you know, doing well because we didn't start very early. Okay, but it's all good. I think we'll end it here.